Okay, folks, let's do this. We got linear and quadratic systems starting today. Okay, so do you guys think back to Math 10? What was the last unit you guys did? Linear system. What happened with the linear system? A lot of straight lines. Just two straight lines, right? Okay. So this is math 10. Math 10, you have one graph doing this, okay, another graph doing this, and then what, what are you looking for? The spot where they cross. And this was like linear, linear systems. This is grade 10. Okay, and then there was, you could do it like that with a graph, or you could do two different things. You could do substitution, or you could do, very nice, elimination. You guys remember those? Okay, so we'll do some of that today, okay? So in math 11, here, instead of just doing linear linear, we'll do <coughs> linear quadratic right here, and we'll also do quadratic quadratic, okay? Okay, so here's an example of a linear quadratic. So here's y equals x plus 6, and here's y equals x squared. And if this was a system and you're looking for the solutions, you're looking for two points. This spot and this spot. Okay? So using the intersect feature, let's just do this quickly. You guys have seen this lots. You would have had to use it a few times on the test yesterday. Do you remember that? What are we talking about when we have systems y1 and y2? First one is x squared. Second one is an x plus 6. Go ahead, type those in. And then I'm just going to go zoom 6, go to my standard window. Okay, so I can see both. If I can see both, I'm happy. If I can only see one, I'm not too happy. Let's check it if I can only see one. I'll change my y max to 5. <coughs> I can only see one. So if this is my situation, I'm looking at my screen, do I assume that there's only one solution, or am I smart and I realize there could be another up here somewhere? Right, so you've got to be smarter than your window settings, okay? So please make a note of that. Be smarter than your window settings. And then to find these spots, second trace, number five. And then just hit enter, enter, enter. It'll always find one really quickly. So which one do we got there? Negative two comma four. So it just means that this point here is going to satisfy both equations. Okay, so for example, what's negative two squared? Four, right? And what's negative two plus six? It's got to be 4. And look at the table. When x is negative 2, both functions spit out a y value of 4. Good. Second trace, let's find the other one. Second trace, 5. This time you've got to get closer to the other one. If you just hit enter, 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 it'll find one of them. But now, to get the other one, you've got to get close to it. Now hit enter, enter, enter. Now this one's 3. So what's 3 squared? 9. And what's 3 plus 6? So it satisfies both equations. Okay, so <coughs> excuse me, algebraically, so we're able to do it using technology. These are the two answers: this spot and this spot. Now, to do it algebraically, you're going to use this method of substitution or this method of elimination. So quickly, I'll show you substitution. Y equals x plus six, and y equals x squared. Okay, so let's think about this. And I'll just do something over here. This is a very basic math, a uh, basic logic almost. Ah, what am I doing there? Okay, let's just say that A equals B. You guys cool with that? And let's say that B equals C. So what could you, conclusion could you make? Yeah, if A is B and B is C, then A must also be See, so let's look at this down here. What do you notice about this? x plus 6 equals y, and x squared equals y. So you could be like, okay, well, x squared has to equal x plus 6, because they both equal y. They have to equal each other. Does that make sense? And what I essentially did 
was I took the fact that y equals x squared, and I essentially just did a substitution there. I subbed it in. Sub it in. Now, solving something like this is just stuff that you've seen before, where you're solving degree 2 polynomials. So how to solve a degree 2 poly? What do you always got to do? Dump it all to the side equal to 0, and then you can factor if possible. If you can't factor, go quad formula. Right? What's the factors going to work here? And you already know the answers. No, you already know the answers there, girl. It's, those are the answers. So if the answer is negative 2, the, it would have to be x. Remember that? Zero product rule. And if the answer is 3, you would have to have x minus 3. Now you can always double check. You got your x squared. You got your minus 6. That's good. And then see if you get minus 1. Minus 3 plus a 2. It's the right factoring. <coughs> okay. What if you do elimination? y equals x plus 6. y equals x squared. Do you guys remember elimination? What do you have to do with elimination? It's just like back in elementary school when you're adding and subtracting. It has to be in columns. Okay? Is it in columns right now? Well, the y matches the y, but does the x match the x squared? No. So let's rewrite this. x squared, and then this would be 0x squared plus x plus 6. Now, does it match up per, per column? We got our y's in the columns, we got our x squares in the columns, we got our x's in our columns, and we got our, so this is 0x, and this is a 0 constant. Now you subtract. y minus y? Zero. And that's the whole point of eliminating. We're trying to eliminate <coughs> one of the variables. Now y is gone. Now the only thing that matters is x. One v equation, one variable, you can solve that. So x squared minus zero, well that's x squared. Zero minus one and zero minus six. Look at this thing. Have you seen this before? It's right over here, right? So uh, the elimination and the substitution, when you really boil it down, it's all the same process. Okay, it's all the same stuff. And uh, I mean, I took a course in university called linear algebra, so there wasn't any quadratics, it's all straight lines. <coughs> Excuse me, but we'd have like seven lines and seven equations. And we'd take like three pages of algebra to get it done, but it's all the same stuff. Okay, so... It's really not that challenging. A lot of students find that the systems is actually a pretty, pretty straightforward unit. Okay, so we found our x values from this factoring. So we got x negative 2, and we got x equals 3. <coughs> but if you look at our solutions, they also have y values with them. So how do you find the y values? Substitute, Substitute back into one of these equations. It doesn't matter which one. Let's just use the square. That's easy. You just have to square it. So if x is negative 2, y would be 4. Here's one of your answers. When x is 3, y would be 9. Here's your other answer. Doesn't matter which one you use. I would just go with the easier one. E probably plus 6 is even easier. You just got to add 6. Any questions before we move on? Hopefully that rang a bell from all your Math 10 stuff. I forgot my juice. You just reminded me. No thanks. <laughs> Did you guys need that? Because I can't bring it back. Okay. Okay, so the next one here. Um, they've given us a quadratic in terms of its graph. They've also given us the equation for it. Okay, so that's nice. And then they've given us this other equation, y equals 3x. So y equals 3x. So this is something that you could straight type into your calculator, go second, second graph, and then go into the table, and then you can get some points for free. 
I mean, you can also do this in your head. Like, what happens when x is 0? y is 0. What happens when x is 1? y is 3. And now you've got, you've got the line, because as you go up 1, this y value goes up 3. So over 1, up 3. 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 Finally, we hit. Now, will it ever hit again over there? Good, good. And is that obvious just from looking at it? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Now, what point is this? This is uh, 6, comma, 18. Thank you. 6, comma, 18. Now, let's go backwards so that we can get the point down left. So now we go back 1, down 3. Back 1, down 3. Here's the other one. What's that spot? Minus 2, thank you, Ashwin, and minus 6, thank you. So we have the answers. The solutions to the system, and it comes as ordered pairs, guys. The solutions are ordered pairs. They're intersections <coughs> of two lines, or pardon me, of two curves, so they have to come as points on the graph as ordered pair, an x value and a y value, okay? You need to remember that. You a lot of students will do the algebra, they'll just get the x and they'll stop. Then you only get half the points for the test. So minus 2, minus 6, and what's this over here? 6 and 18. Okay, now should we do this by algebra? Yeah. yeah. So that's doing it graphically. Multiple choice, I mean, you could do it any way you want. Graphically, algebraically, right? Use your calculator any way you want. 18, yep. I'm going to erase this, okay. Nobody's saying anything? Okay. So let's do this algebraically. So we got y equals x a squared minus a x minus a 12, and we got y equals 3x. Now, how many different ways can we do this? Two ways? Substitution or elimination? And there's also the transitivity that I mentioned, where like A equals B, B equals C, so A equals C. So that's basically substitution. So I like that because it's obvious that Y, y is 3X, right? And here's a Y here, so let's put 3X as a substitution there. So all that happens is 3X equals X squared minus X minus 12. I prefer that method. I prefer substitution. I don't like eliminating with quadratics. When it's linear, linear, I actually prefer eliminating. Linear, linear, I prefer elimination. But with quadratics and linear, I prefer substitution. Interesting. OK, so dump the 3x to the right. Why do we do that? Keep x squared positive, and that's how we solve degree 2 polynomials, make it equal to 0. So subtracting 3, so minus 1 becomes minus 4. Can this be factored? How are you going to make 12 and use get to a 4? It can't be 3 and 4. 6, and we already knew that, right? We already had those answers. So it's 6 and 2, which one's negative? Good. So this negative 6 would yield positive 6. This negative positive 2 would yield negative 2. And then are we done? So go and get the y, right? So which one's easier to work with, y1 or y2? y2 is way easier to work with, right? You just take the x and scale by 3. So times that by 3, you got 18. Times that by 3, you got... And those are the two answers that we plotted, right? Yes. Hallelujah. <coughs> Sorry, my God, it's, uh, I was chirping too many kids at lunch and I lost my voice. No, 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 the intramurals. That's like the highlight of my day, going in the soccer intramurals and making fun of kids. Ah, you guys love it. Okay, you guys fire back all the time. Why are you whispering sweet nothings into his ear? Okay, so we're going to repeat part A for this one.
Can somebody help me out? What was the first quadratic? Uh, y is equal to x squared minus x minus 12. Okay, and then we're going to repeat this with 3x minus 24. So, same story. This equals y, this equals y, so they must equal each other. Got some weird hand in the way here. Okay, dumping everything to which way? Good, make the left 0. So we've got to dump 3x. Still the same story, but this time the constant will be different. Or is it the same? You got a plus a 24, so plus 12. Was that the same constant? Different sign? Okay. Now let's go and factor this guy. Still 6 and 2, right? But uh, this guy is the negative and this guy is the positive. Ooh, we have issues. We have issues because now this and this don't make a positive. Can this be factored? Both negative. But then it won't add up. Yeah. Quad formula. Nobody wants to do quad formula, eh? You forgot how to do it. Okay, <laughs> yeah, yeah, let's do this. Uh, can I erase all this? Okay, just rewriting what we got there. After all that, we had an x squared minus a 4x and a plus a 12, right? Okay. So, w and this is equal to zero, and we got to use quad formula. So, this is always on your formula sheet, so you don't have to memorize it. Negative b plus or minus, after you do it enough, you do start to real memorize it, though, all over 2a. Okay, so let's pop this up over here. Negative b, so that would be a 4. Everyone okay with that? Okay, and then a b squared would be b squared, so 16 minus... Ooh, I'm starting to see something. Because 4ac is going to be bigger than 16. What's 4ac? Uh, 4 times 1 times 12? 4ac. 4 times 1 times 12? 4 times 12, help me out. 48? Okay. A automatically, some alarm bells should be going off. 16 minus 48 is less than 0. You cannot take the square root of a negative, so no solution. Okay, so what does that mean in terms of systems? What does it mean this line here and that quadratic? Will they ever meet? No. Not in this time frame. <laughs> Maybe in another dimension. <laughs> Ethan's, Ethan's so bright. <laughs> they'll never, they'll never touch. It's almost sad, right? What about parallel lines? Do they ever touch? Do they ever touch? What about every other set? If the if the line if two lines are uh, are not parallel, will they meet once? And then what will happen? They'll drift apart forever. So which one's worse? Close but never touch. Intersecting lines touch once and then never, never see each other again. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay, let's keep going. We got stuff to do. Honestly, though. Okay. Complete the following. If the graph of a linear and the graph of a quadratic intersect at two points, then the linear quadratic system has two solutions. If the graph of a linear quadratic intersect at one point, then obviously has one solution. And if the graph never intersects, then that got zero solutions. Okay? So that was that no solution that we just did. Okay, in the process of solving a linear quadratic system, we end up solving another quadratic. Please highlight this. And over here, just put, we call this like some resulting quadratic. 
it's not the original quadratic. And that's what sometimes the students get messed up with this. It's not the original quadratic. So like when you go to plug something back in, don't go to this. This is just the resulting quadratic from the algebra that helps you find the solution. Okay? It's just some other quadratic that you're going to solve that solves the original system. And then what you can do is if you can't factor, so can't factor, question mark, can't factor, then you need to do the quad formula. And the quad formula, you're going to look at the discriminant. And the discriminant will, if you look back in the notes for the discriminant, it gives you all those. Do you remember that? If the discriminant is equal to 0, greater than 0, and less than 0, you'll have like 2, 1, and 0 solutions. Okay, so when will you have two solutions? When it's greater than zero. When will you have one solution? When it's equal to zero. And when will you have no solution? When it's less than zero. Okay. Oh, I think that's all right here. So two distinct roots, two distinct roots, then the discriminant is greater than zero. And again, see this resulting quadratic? Resulting quadratic. Okay. And note the difference between distinct and equal. If they're equal, it's the same guy. Equal is when they, the quadratic comes and touches once. That's one touch on the x-intercept. And then the last but not the least, this is the less than zero and no solutions finish off the notes there. Okay, and then the assignment follows. So let's jump into lesson two. That was only about 20 minutes. Got lots of time. We're doubling up lessons so that we can finish before the Christmas break so that we can write the test on the 23rd so you don't have to have a test study time for Christmas break. You guys go take your Christmas break, you get refueled, recharged, you come back ready to study for your final. All charged up. Oh, before you get started, let's look at the assignment. When you go to do the assignment, I'll just give you a little tip here. Y equals Y. Okay, therefore, x equals x squared minus 2, and then solve. Okay, and then plug back in. Plug back, get the y. Okay, once you get solve x, plug back, get y. Okay, and you can also use your technology to support your understanding. Don't go to your solution manual. Check your tech. You don't have the solution manual on the test, but you have your tech. We are. Okay, this question here, number five, in the assignment, this is an example where you have to use substitution. Elimination just won't even, won't cut it. U sub, because elimination won't work. Anybody know why? X is x squared plus a y squared is 100. This is just a formula for a circle. And then you have this other line, y equals 2x. So when you go to subtract, you don't eliminate x or y. It doesn't get eliminated. So you have to use substitution. And I said that I actually prefer substitution anyway. Okay, So I wouldn't be doing too much elimination, you guys. x squared. I picked that up at university. I had this Russian professor, and uh, <laughs> he was amazing. He'd be like, Hello, my name is Alex, and I'm here to teach you mathematics. <laughs> and that's how he talked like, nonstop, and I loved every minute of it. <laughs> yeah, we just did calculus for like 80 It was like an hour and a half straight, just whiteboards and whiteboards. The feeling of calculus it was so fun. Anyways, those days were long behind me now. Oh yeah, spending like six or seven grand a year just to do math. <laughs> no, six or seven grand a semester just to do math. Okay, now we jump into quad quad. 
Last lesson we were doing linear quad, right? So what's different about this? So, you know, you could do anything like, okay, what if one quadratic does this, and what if another quadratic does this? How many spots did they touch? Two, so you have two solutions. What if we did something like this? Those guys ever touch? Will they ever touch? No. What about this one? Will those guys ever touch? Yeah. They might touch, right? Or they will touch? They might. <laughs> yeah, eventually they'll cross, right? I look like a wrestler or about to do something here. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> I don't know. This one here? Well, maybe maybe you should explore that. Doing some explorative mathematics. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe they'd only cross once. Maybe. What's going on, Zara? If you want to tell a joke, tell it to all of us. Come on, Zara. Deja, get off that thing. Emily, focus. Jimmy, focus, sir. You guys ready to go? Okay, Carl, pull the hood back. Are you Assassin's Creed or something? Okay, let's do this one. Can I ask you a question? Would elimination work for this? Yes. Elimination looks amazing on this because it's all lined up in columns. It's like, it's like God's gift right here to a math equation. Okay? It's not always going to be like that. Okay? For some reason, I can't control Z. Okay, so. Yes, you can eliminate here. So Y minus Y is 0. That's the whole point of elimination. If you didn't catch that. Elimination removes one of the variables. Okay, And this is something I'm going to jot down. If you have two variable and two equation, you happy. Okay, But to solve it, you need to get down to one equation, one variable, and then you even happier. Okay? That's his tongue. Because he's a smoker. <laughs> there, there. Happier. I don't even know what that is. Okay, 6 minus 2, 4x squared. Now be careful here. This is where s I lose so many of you because you know what you're doing, but you're just not careful. And all those junior high days when you were too busy chasing the boys and the girls, you weren't doing your integer operations properly in grade 7. 7 minus negative 1. Okay, don't screw that stuff up. And I, what I always do is I always like say it out loud as I'm doing this. I'm like obviously in a test, you don't speak, but you say it in your head. You're like, okay, minus 4, minus positive 1. So if I have a minus 4 and I take away 1, I got minus 5. Get it? I'm just trying to give you guys a strategy. Don't screw up the integer operations, okay? Now, look at this. What do we call this? Res Very nice, Shaq. Resulting quadratic. It's not the original quadratics, okay? But we use this to solve the system. The system is this. We use the squiggly bracket for system. Okay. How to solve this bad boy? And I saw a lot of students on the test a while ago. It was the uh, rationals test. They go like, okay, well, 4 times 5 is negative 20, so negative 20. So what multiplies to 20? 4 and 5, and then they go like this. And then, like, they think that they have it. How wrong is this? This is so wrong. This is like students that don't pass math 10 kind of thing do this. And then I saw some on the test a while back, and I was so, I was upset. This like actually shook me to my core. 
Okay? When you do this, you have to think, okay, what are the numbers that multiply to negative 20 that also add to 8? 10 and 2, what's the negative? Negative, negative 2. You don't go like this, x plus a 10, x minus 2. That's so bad. It's so bad. Okay? What do you do? You break down those middle terms, and then you jump into this GCF factoring. Right? I know one of the factors already. It's 2x plus 5. You see it? Because this, what's the GCF of these two? Only a negative one, right? Let's take it out. So one of them is going to be 2x plus 5. So how are we going to make this look like a 2x and a 5? Take out a 2x. Good. 2x plus a 5. So now you have it. You got the 2x and the 5, and you got the 2x and the negative 1. Solve these. Negative 5 halves, and this one is positive 1 half. Any question with that? Do you guys remember the zero product rule? A little bit? You remember it? Or you forget it? Cover up the 2. What should it be? What's the opposite of plus 5? How to get rid of the 2? Divide it out. If the 2 is not there, 1, divide out the 2. Okay? So are we done, Emily? You're good at this. Are we done? Are we done, Emily? Good. You need to do the Y. Good. So w what are we going to do? Are we going to, is there an easier, which one's easier? Y2. Y2 is a little bit easier? Yeah. So let's just use Y2. Y equals uh, 2X squared minus X plus 1. And now we sub in. One of the X values is minus 5 halves, and we're going to have to square that. Minus 5, negative 5 halves and then add one. Are you going to do that by hand? No, you can. Is there a possibility for error? Yeah, like 5 halves squared would be 25 quarters, and you have to make sure that you turn the negative to a positive, and then 25 quarters times 2, so that would be 25 halves. 25 halves plus 5 halves would be 30 halves. That's 15 plus 1. Should be 16. So this should be 16. Okay, like, did I mess up? Am I stressed out? Yeah. I'm in a test and I'm stressed. Okay, watch me, watch me, watch me. Negative 5 divided by 2, enter. Everyone do that. Even Jolene. <laughs> I mentioned your name one time. Storing X. Did everybody catch that one? Yeah. Storing X, enter. Now watch this, 2x squared minus x plus 1. Okay, did I get 16? Yeah. Okay, so here's one of the answers. Negative 5 halves, comma, 16. Good man. Okay, now let's do the same thing with half. So we're going to go x value half, hit enter. So then we'll go um, store x. And now I can type it in again. 2x squared minus x plus 1. And the answer is 1. Okay, so there's the other one when x is half. Now you got... A written response question. And you need to show your work. Show this. Sub it in. Use your calculator. Get the answer. As long as you show that process, it doesn't matter if you don't do it in your head. But if you show your work, you'll get the mark. Okay, then they want us to sketch. I'm not sketching. I'm, I'm using tech. Okay, so we got a 6x squared plus a 7x minus 4, and we got the 2x squared, oh gosh, 2x squared 
minus an x and a plus and a 1. I've got the standard window and I can see both. Not very well. Be smarter, Be smarter than your window. I can see the 1 half answer. There it is. And the, the minus 5 halves is negative 2.5, so that should be like up here somewhere. See the pixels are kind of about to hit there? And look at this window. Do I need all this stuff to the right and all this stuff to the left? But I need up, right? So let's cut off some of the x. Let's just go 5 to 5. And let's go 15 to 15, negative positive. Now I can see a lot better. And I can, I can sort of see those pixels crossing. So second trace, five, bang, bang, bang. Now l here's the problem with the tech. It's only going to give you the decimal, right? Now 0.5 is an easy one. You guys know 0.5 is half. But what about the other one, the five halves? That might lose some of you. You can do math fraction. Yes, you can. So get over there. Enter, enter, enter. Negative 2.5. So you go second mode. You quit out of there. Hit X. It, it saves it locally. And then you can go math fraction. Okay. Cool beans? And you can sketch that? You can sketch that here. And then here's the assignment. So do you need me to do one more, or are you guys good to go? One more for Daoud? Hey, for Omar, we'll do another one. <laughs> Just kidding.